Hi, my name is Kaylee Soberpena and my social justice film project will be on deviance or the current punishments fair, just, and moral. So, what is deviance? According to our Sociology 100 Classes book, Revel, deviance is any behavior that does not conform to social expectations. There are five important principles that help us understand social deviance. One, deviance is socially constructed. Two, deviance is relative, not absolute. Three, the majority determines who and what is deviant. Four, deviance is an integral part of all societies. And five, the violators of important social norms are often stigmatized. In this film, we will be focusing on the blaming the victim technique, labeling theory, and how those two important topics of deviance loop back to how the punishments, specifically incarceration and the death penalty, are unjust to black and indigenous people of color. First, we look at the blaming the victim technique. The blaming the victim technique is when people look at the individual to blame for their deviance instead of looking at society. With this kind of technique, Society blames the victim without looking at the external sources that have also affected their deviance, such as the government, the economy, the system of stratification, the system of justice, and the educational system. Society thinks that the flaw is within the deviant and not a function of these societal arrangements. However, multiple factors come into play when one acts with deviance. Does the U.S. use this technique? What are the consequences of blaming the victim? The United States blames the individual instead of looking at the bigger picture, or in other words, instead of looking at society. The consequences of the blaming the victim technique are that it reinforces the social myth of fate and to what degree we have control over fate, like social Darwinism. Along with reinforcing social myths, this technique also gives harsh punishments like incarceration and the death penalty solely to the victim rarely looking at the external factors in context of the deviant situation. The second topic of the film is the labeling theory. What is the labeling theory? According to our book, Rebel, the labeling theory is the view of deviant behavior that stresses the importance of the society in defining what is illegal and in assigning deviant status to particular individuals, which in turn dominates their identities and behaviors. What are the consequences of the labeling theory? There are two types of deviance, primary deviance and secondary deviance. Rebel defines primary deviance as the rule breaking that occurs before being labeled a deviant. And it defines secondary deviance as a deviant behavior that results from the labeling process. What is the importance of these two? Let's use the black prison population as an example. Black people are incarcerated at a higher rate than any other group. An immense consequence of this representation in the prison population is that it causes many cases of secondary deviance. With the large black population incarcerated and labeled as deviant by society, the younger generation of black children have the chance of showing deviant behaviors because of this labeling process. So how does this relate back to incarceration and the death penalty? Because of the United States' current use of the blaming the victim technique, the following events from our book Rebel happened in the following years. In 2015, state expenditures on corrections have increased from $6.7 billion in 1985 to $56.9 billion now. The prison population increased from 319,598 in 1980 to 1,476,000 847 in 2015. Today, there are roughly 7 million Americans in jail, in prison, on parole, or on probation. The United States incarcerates more people than any other country in the world and has increased its incarcerated population by 500% in the past 40 years, with Louisiana being the incarceration capital of the world. There are even more problems when it comes to the labeling theory and how this theory's aftermath is seen in sentencing and death row. The effects of the labeling theory can be seen through the representation in the following facts from our book Rebel. There is a significant difference in sentence when finding a white person guilty of killing a black person in contrast to finding a black person guilty when killing a white person. Black people receive harsher sentencing and punishment. 
people from disadvantaged categories such as racial minorities, the poor, or the illiterate are disproportionately given the death penalty as well as disproportionately executed by the state. Since 1976, 287 black defendants have been executed for the murder of a white victim compared to 20 white defendants executed for the murder of a black victim. There are two important questions to ask ourselves. How sure is the justice system and is our justice system fair, just, and moral? According to Brian Stevenson's novel, Just Mercy, for every nine people executed in this country, one person on death row is exonerated. Is it fair, just, and moral to execute one for their actions after one out of nine people are exonerated from death row? Is it fair, just, and moral to strip a person from the opportunity of rehabilitation, redemption, and grace? Is capital punishment a deterrent to capital crimes? My answer is no. This is no way to deal with deviance. There are better ways to deal with deviance, and I believe the current punishments are not fair, just, or moral options. With the inequalities of the blaming the victim technique and the labeling theory, how is sentencing someone to death fair, just, and moral when it is evident that there are so many biases within our justice system? How is this relevant to current events right now? On December 10th, 2020, Brandon Bernard was killed by lethal injection for his role in the 1999 crime of double murder robbery when he was 18. He was the ninth man executed by the federal government since July and is one of the six scheduled for execution during Trump's last moments in office until January 26, 2021. Bernard's final words were apologies. He stated, I'm sorry, that's the only words that I can say that completely capture how I feel now and how I felt that day. Here it can clearly be seen how the US government and the current leader of the United States horrifyingly chose to blame the victim and ignore the effects that the label theory has on individuals. Yes, I do believe the crime Bernard committed was also unjust, unfair, and immoral. However, after doing research for this film project, I do understand that there are always external factors coming into play in any crime, and I do understand that he showed remorse. Our government should allow the opportunity of rehabilitation, redemption, and grace, and right now, they are demonstrating the actions that they are punishing others for. We have the capacity to hold people accountable and separate dangerous people from society without foreclosing that opportunity. Please visit the link in the description to take action. Thank you for watching.